is truly honor and privilege to be with you. Like many of you who grew up in a rural community, I was brought up to believe that an engineer is someone who operates, repairs, maintains a machine, an engine, or works on electrical wiring, or builds a house. My community is full of enthusiastic artisans, where success means to be a good carpenter, tailor, or bricklayer. We have only one engineer, someone who repairs electronic devices. And everybody in that community, especially the younger ones, look after him. And we saw him as a role model, and we wanted to be like him when we grow up. And that one of the reasons I went ATBU to become an engineer, but I end up becoming a computer scientist. Let me share some insight with you about my understanding of the profession of engineering. For me, the engineering profession is one of the first pro profession in the history of humankind. Because we cannot trace the exact origin of engineering, but it can be traced to the, from the ancient through the resonance to the modern era. Engineering has different fields. We can say like the structural engineering started when the first tree was felled across stream to be used as a bridge. And we can say century engineering started when the first man divided a brook to bring a drinking water closer to his home. All this started without any standard or codes. So the profession is a living profession. It evolved over the time and it is happened organically. It is the most vital profession in the civilization and it drives all the industrial revolution in our history. Starting from the first industrial revolution, which spanned from about 1760 to 1840, when railroad was constructed and steam engine was invented for mechanical production. You know, before then, we used our muscles, force, and animals for production of anything. But the first industrial revolution started. If you look at it, mechanical engineering is at the core of that first industrial revolution. And the second industrial revolution started between mid 19th century to the mid 20th century. And it was dried by the invention of light, electricity. And when it started, when Michael Faraday, one of the engineers that invented electricity, was trying to explain the benefit of electricity to the former British Prime Minister, Gladden, William Gladstone. Gladstone keeps asking him, what use is it for? Until when Faraday told him, 
one day you will be able to tax it. That's when he understands the use of electricity. So you can see the disconnection between invention or engineering to the common good of people. At the beginning, we don't understand what is it for. And we don't bother to put standards and codes or regulation around it. Because basically regulation, standards, stifle innovation. Because it will limit your thinking. It won't allow you to think out of box. So if you want to be innovative, you should allow people to build, design, and create the invention before you start talking about standard and codes. Then the third industrial revolution started around 1960 with the invention of computer, from the mainframe to the personal computer and so on. That's changed the way we live and work. Up until the beginning of this century, when the fourth industrial revolution started, which built on the third industrial revolution, that is about digital, rev uh, digital revolution, or we call it the fourth industrial revolution. So in the fourth industrial revolution, computer science or computing is key in driving that. And always I try to wonder what's the relationship between engineering and computer science or mathematics. Because also engineering is defined as the application of science and mathematics to solve a problem. So that's why sometimes if I see Koren, NSE, I wonder that do I have to have a certificate engineering degree to be an engineer? Well, if you look at the origin of the profession itself, the people that started it, they don't have any certificate. So why are we limiting it to only those with degree certificate to be a members or to be called an engineer? While in our society, when we were growing up, we don't care about certificate or we don't see certificates or affiliation to any society as a prerequisite to earn that title engineer. Anybody with hands-on skills or someone that can use materials and force nature to meet his needs or the community needs is called an engineer. So the fourth industrial revolution basically is driven by computers, systems, applications, which most of them are created by drops out, by people that didn't go through the normal education systems. So are we going to call them engineers? Or is it only someone that goes through the education system and earn a software engineering degree? Okay, that we can call an engineer. If you look at, at the beginning of this century, when all this digital revolution started, I sometimes think about it the same way with Alice in the Wonderland. I think most of you know about Alice in the Wonderland. You remember the white rabbit rushing to the, it is rabbit holes and Alice rushed after it. So when all this digital revolution started, we were all Alice and we rushed after it. What happened in the Wonderland? In the Wonderland, we learned we can search Google. But 20 years later, we realized that we search Google not as much as Google searches us. 
in Wonderland, we thought we used social media. But today, we realized social media uses us more than the way we use social media. In the Wonderland, we assumed these are free raw materials or free services. But now we realize that these big techs also, they see us as free raw materials. They use for extraction, commodification, and sales. And the most dangerous illusion in the Wonderland was we believe that social media increase or improve democracy and increase freedoms. But now we realize that it erodes democracy and diminishes freedom. Why all this happened? Because we thought this is not an engineering practice. We don't need to apply standards or codes. These are just scientists experimenting. We allow them to do whatever they want without any codes. But today we realized our life, everything we do depends on this technology. Most of us in this room, we use our mobile phones or technology for more than 70% of our day-to-day -day activities. Some of us, we use it to wake us up in the morning, we use it to read news, we use it to read, to do research, we use it to navigate our ways to places we don't know, we use it to shop online, anything you can think of. And this technology has been characterized by three capabilities. It is becoming increasingly capable. Today, we have technology that government is using for policy. We have technology used for policy, but that technology has been proven to be racist. The technology profiles every black person as criminal because the person, the engineer, the software engineer that did the algorithm was biased and was not following any standards or any practices to the, uh, any codes to design that algorithm. And we've also seen a recruitment system being gender biased. The system assumed for you to be a high performer, you must be a man. Because in a certain organization, most of the high performers are men. So we've allowed this technology to control us because we obey the rules of this technology more than the way we obey the rules of our countries. And these technologies are developed by people, software engineers, which in most cases, you don't even recognize them as engineers. You see them as a computer scientist. But we obey those rules more than the way we obey our constitution and laws. So to me, I see it as a lifelong way to understand the technology, then develop codes and standards for it to follow. That's why the federal government directed NEDA to come up with code of practice for all social media or um, computer interactive uh, platform service providers or intermediaries. We just finished working on code of conduct Code of practice for them. So it is a challenge to Koran also to look at the meaning of engineering, to look at the profession, to see who do we need to bring on board so that they can follow the engineering ethics. Thank you. So we need you to get the other people that use science that use science and math to solve problems, to also follow the engineering ethics, standards, and codes. Thank you.